Imam Qurtubi says that there are three benefits of remembering death in abundance or perpetually. And perpetually doesn't mean 24-7. We pray, you know, they say we pray all day, but we don't really pray all day. We pray throughout the day, five times a day. And that is good enough to remember your Creator. So on and off throughout the day. And especially when we find that we are being pulled into this rat race, pulled into this deception that Allah Almighty speaks about in the last part of verse 185 of Surah Ali Imran, this deception, when we are being pulled in, moth should come and pull us out. That's, that's the purpose of moth. When we are being dragged in, when we are being pulled in, into this deception, mata'ul ghurur, there should be something that can pull us out, that has the same strength, the same istitaat and ability, and that is moth. So Imam Qurtabi rahmatullah says that if a person remembers death perpetually or let's say in abundance, the first thing, the first perk, the first immediate reward is that this person will make tawbah. He will always make tawbah. Meaning that if he is eating food and the food has dropped onto the clothes, he will not allow the clothes to be stained but he will go and wash it immediately so when his soul is stained with impurity of evil itham, udwan, fisk isyan, whatever it may be he will immediately the, the, the perpetual remembrance of death will allow him to make tawbah immediately because when he thinks about death and he looks at all these events around him he truly believes from the, from the bottom of his heart that he may not wake up in the morning. He may not live another day. And he can't remain with this wrong in his account and stand in front of Allah Almighty. So the remembrance of death will push him to make tawbah immediately. And one of our sheikhs, my Mufti Junaid Sahib, uh, Karim Mahbub Sahib, we all know, uh, Hakim Akhtar Sahib, Rahmatullahi, one of the greatest uh, saints in modern time, who passed away, Rahmatullah Ali. I was reading one of his um, discourses, and he makes mention that Allah ke dos manne ke do trike. There are two ways of be, becoming the friend of Allah Almighty. One is pretty hard, and one is pretty easy. And he says the hard one is never commit a sin. So there are some people that don't commit wrong, and through that channel of true commitment. They become awliya. They befriend Allah Almighty. Allah befriends them. But there's another path, and this is for most of the people, that they drop, they do wrong, but immediately they make tawbah. So through the door of tawbah, they become the friend of Allah Almighty. Indeed, we should aim to achieve the former. We should try to Abstain from wrong and please Allah Almighty. That is the best channel. That is the best highway. That is the best path. The path of prophets. The path of those that we aspire to. But let's say we find ourselves falling short to that path. And we find ourselves weak in using this machine. Then we can at least opt for the second path that is very easy. And that is make tawbah immediately. So don't allow that crime to sit in the account. And that's why the, the, the two angels, Sa'iq and Shaheed, the driver and the witness, all right, these two, two angels, the angel on the left is not allowed to write the sin in the account immediately. It has to consult with the angel on the right and it gives ample opportunity to the person to repent. But once the person doesn't repent, then the angel on the right says, yes, you can print it into his ledger of deed. So that's the first perk. The second perk is that whatever Allah, and this is amazing. Right at the end of verse 185, what did Allah Almighty make mention of? The sickness that does not allow a person to truly prepare for what is to come after death. Now, the second benefit of remembering death perpetually in abundance is that whatever Allah Almighty gives to this person, he will be satisfied with it. That is known as qana'ah. That is known as qana'ah. 
And that's why Nabi Akrim Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَيْسَ الْغِنَى عَنْ كَثْرَةِ الْعَرْضِ وَلَكِنَّ الْغِنَى غِنَى النَّفْسِ That richness in essence is not the abundance of resources and wealth and dirham and dananir. No, that richness is the richness of the heart. So if one person has so much, and remember this, Maulana Jalaluddin Rumi, rahmatullah alayhi, makes mention that this nafs that is inside the inner self has one characteristic. And remember this. And I'd like you to lock this in your memory box. That this inner self has one quality. It can never be satisfied. Yaad rakhna. Ye nafs kabhi mutmain ni hota. The only place where the nafs is going to be satisfied is in the next world. Not in this world. That's why Allah Almighty says in the glorious Quran in Surah number 41, verse number 31, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ Whatever your inner self desires, whatever your inner self, your nafs desires, you will be granted. And whatever you ask for will be granted to you. نُزُلًا مِّنْ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ An entertainment an entertainment from who? The most merciful, the most forgiving. Nafs idha to mutmain ni sakta. And that's why we see the entire world that has broken their link with the vessel of spirituality, they are drifting so far away that they are pushing the boundaries of morality. They are pushing the boundaries of morality. Why are they pushing these boundaries of morality and decency? and principles because their nafs is not satisfied with what is available. It wants more, it wants more and it will continue. That's why we need to and it's, it's amazing this is something spiritual but we need to satisfy the nafs with that that does not perish. It's, it's, it's a philosophy. You can't satisfy the nafs with something that is to perish. Because that is not sustainable. You need to satisfy the nafs with something that is not to perish. And that's why they say when you say one subhanallah, the reward of one subhanallah will never ever perish. Allah ka zikr, Allah ki ita'at, obedience to Allah Almighty through speech or through action will never perish. It will remain for eternity. And that is something that is from the realm of eternity that can satisfy the nafs that cannot be satisfied with something that is a creation. Does it make sense? So this is the second thing, ghina. And number three is that the person that remembers death in abundance, he will start to taste the ecstasy in ibadat. You know, our worships, and it's not only the prayer, it's whenever this machine is being used, it should be used, in the obedience of Allah Almighty, as Nabi Akrim Muhammad took that as a gift to the court of Allah Almighty, at-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibat, whatever I say, whatever I do, my, my financial muscle, all is to please you, Allah Almighty, that whenever a person commits this machine to any kind of movement, any kind of action, any kind of dialogue or speech, it is to please Allah Almighty, all right? And if a person remembers death, it will be easy for him to commit to what the Nabi of Allah presented to Allah Almighty in the high court. The perk of this is we will start to enjoy this. A lot of youngsters say that it's hard to wake up in the morning. Yeah? It's hard to do this. It's hard to drop the gaze. It is hard to drop the gaze. It is hard to give up our dreams. Fair enough, that's fine, it's uh, human nature. But if we start remembering death, then all these orders that come from Allah Almighty, the discharging of them will not feel like a burden. It will feel like a pleasure. You will find ecstasy in using this machine in the obedience of Allah Almighty.